Welcome, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us uh, in this uh, webinar as we explore the power of uh, model coordination in uh, construction cloud uh, for automated uh, class detection. In uh, today's uh, rapidly evolving industry, it is uh, not only important uh, to digitize our workflows, but also to make sure uh, that they are efficient. As we begin, uh, let me introduce uh, Win0 to you if you haven't heard about us. Win0 is uh, now the world's largest uh, Autodesk partner, having recently been acquired by Arkans France, Arkans Systems. Uh, we provide uh, software, hardware, and consulting solutions to the AC market. We have an exceptional depth of experience across the board to help you with your uh, technology adoptions. A bit about myself. Uh, I am Rahul Madani. I am an AC technical consultant at Win0. I specialize in uh, the impl implementation of construction cloud and Revit in the industry. I have about eight, 15 years of experience uh, working as an architect and BIM manager. Uh, I started as a Revit user, then uh, as, um, and I was driven by technology. And since then I started working as a BIM coordinator, BIM manager, and now as a technical consultant at Win0. I am really passionate uh, about the adoption and implementation of technology in the construction sec sector. Um, as we begin the seminar, um, uh, webinar, I invite you to use the Q&A function in Zoom throughout the webinar to ask questions. Um, I will uh, try to reply to all of them at the end of the presentation. Uh, we really wish we could uh, see you all in person but we wanted to uh, introduce, uh, include as many people as possible. And that's why virtual, uh, virtual approach was the best uh, uh, approach for that. Uh, now, now that you know who I am, uh, let's talk a bit about the agenda for the webinar. Um, so what, what I'll do is, firstly, I'll, I'll give you a quick overview of Construction Cloud, just to, so that we know where uh, model coordination sits in uh, ACC. And after that, uh, uh, like before, uh, after that, um, uh, before we get uh, dive into uh, model coordination, I think it's very important to understand what is the purpose of uh, coordination. And uh, once we have a good understanding of that, we will look at a few of the current uh, processes for coordination that are used in the industry. Um, and then, having uh, after that, we'll we'll see what. Uh, Centralized coordination is uh, that that is what we use in uh, model in the model coordination module in ACC. Uh, so to, to begin with, we'll we'll uh, look at the fundamentals or basically how model coordination is set up in ACC, and uh, and as as we start to look at the workflow, uh, the class detection workflow is uh, done in four parts. It starts with uh, visualize, uh, manage, resolve, and report. Uh, we will dive into uh, each of these, and finally, we'll, we'll summarize with some uh, key takeaways and best practices. All right, so let's begin with uh, Construction Cloud. Uh, so Construction Cloud is a cloud platform that offers a number of uh, products uh, in the construction sector. Uh, it consists of uh, BIM Collaborate, Takeoffs, uh, Build, and for today's uh, webinar, we were focusing on uh, model coordination and model coordination sits uh, uh, within the coordination module in uh, uh, BIM Collaborate. So first, uh, like, uh, first thing to understand over here is uh, what, what is the purpose of coordinate, coordination or why, why do we begin with this process in the first place? Uh, so when basically all uh, the disciplines, let's say architecture, structure, MEP, all the designers have uh, come up with their designs. Uh, uh, what we want and uh, what we want to do is uh, we want to bring them together and uh, start construction on site. And as, as we uh, bring these together, what we want is uh, to make sure that uh, they operate smoothly there is uh, zero collisions and there are no clashes between them. That that is the ideal scenario, right? Like, but but when in the real world, uh, um, as we know, 
when you get uh, different designs together, there is bound to be some clashes, uh, some overlaps. And uh, yeah, so, so to summarize, that is the reason why we start this uh, process of uh, coordination in the first place, to make sure that uh, there are zero clashes between the disciplines and uh, to solve all, all the coordination issues. Uh, when we look at the AEC industry, uh, it is an industry where collaboration is uh, one of the key factors for the project to operate uh, smoothly. Yet, when we look at uh, all the disciplines, uh, what, what is happening is that everyone, uh, most, most of them work in silos. They work in their own space uh, over here. Uh, so it's, it's fair to say that uh, it is uh, collaborative, yet uh, a fragmented uh, industry. And uh, when we look at uh, the coordination workflows uh, and how, how the uh, team communicates uh, uh, during the project is uh, during the project uh, as the project commences, uh, it, it's uh, this diagram over here uh, is a perfect uh, representation of uh, how we currently function. Uh, let's say the constru construction is uh, just about to start. We have all the stakeholders uh, on board. Uh, we've, we've got them together and now we uh, they are expected to uh, collaborate, uh, communicate and build. Um, so what is, what is going to happen is, uh, uh, let's say the architecture team over here uh, is, produces a set of drawings. They are going to share it with uh, the project manager the project manager will uh, later uh, share it to the subcontractor, to the estimator, and so on. And in, and maybe in between, the engineer needs certain drawings from the architect. He's, he's going to communicate directly with him. So with, with this kind of communication, what, what is going to happen is that uh, it, it, it's, uh, it's, it's not streamlined. Uh, there, there, there will be times that uh, there will be some gaps. Uh, and this is going to lead uh, to a uh, data loss. Uh, and currently, when we move on to the phase uh, where we start, uh, where, where we want to uh, look at class detection, uh, what we do is we use uh, tools like Navisworks. So the tool, uh, the Navisworks was uh, introduced uh, back in uh, the early 2000s. It was a game changer back then. Uh, the ability to combine model and automatically detect clashes and uh, create uh, clash reports is amazing. Uh, this was a big step forward from the traditional process where you have uh, one person from the contractor side who was dedicated to manually go through each drawing and make sure that there are no clashes. So Navisworks eliminated the element of uh, human uh, error uh, from the traditional process. And uh, these days, uh, what we do is uh, there, there's someone called as a BIM coordinator. He, he's he's an expert in uh, Navisworks. Uh, what he'll do is uh, he'll he'll, um, co um, he'll combine uh, drawings uh, from all the combined models and uh, from uh, all the disciplines. They can be in uh, different file formats. Uh, he'll uh, he'll he'll combine them. He'll make sure that they are aligned and uh, start uh, run the clash detection report. And uh, the Navis works will then uh, spit out uh, uh, the report, which then he shares, uh, uh, the BIM coordinator will share the weekly uh, uh, meetings. Uh, so this is the process uh, currently. Uh, 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 Navis works was a big step forward, but I think, uh, and uh, there, there is still a, a possibility for us to evolve and fine tune this process. And uh, that is where we have uh, the concept of uh, uh, centralized coordination that comes into the picture. So well, what is uh, centralized coordination? Uh, so in, 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 <clears throat> in, the con in the concept of uh, centralized coordination, what we have is uh, we have something called as a common data environment. Uh, in, in, in simple terms, common data environment uh, is a platform and environment uh, um, where all the stakeholders can upload all uh, project data or, or models and drawings. And uh, if, if someone wants to reach out uh, for that 
for particular information, they, they just simply reach out to this platform uh, and uh, so, uh, and collect it uh, from there. So all 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 your data is in one one place, and so now all the communications are going to be uh, streamlined. And when you look at uh, clash detection in uh, centralized coordination, uh, what is going to happen is that uh, uh, all the teams uh, uh, can, uh, let's say architecture structure and MEP, they load their models to call the common data environment uh, or, uh, or this, the platform. And what is going to happen is they are automatically a clash detection report is uh, uh, made available. So now the job of the BIM coordinator uh, is simply to look at the clashes and uh, create issues. Previously, he was uh, he not, so now he doesn't have to uh, make sure that the models are aligned or uh, they are in the same file format or do make any changes regarding that. He can simply um, look at the clash matrix uh, in, in model uh, and look and start resolving these clashes objectively. If he can resolve the clash, uh, then he's going to simply make the change and upload the new model uh, uh, to clash detection. Whereas uh, if uh, the, the, the clash issue uh, needs, so, uh, the clash needs to be resolved, then he's going to uh, create an issue, uh, discuss it with the team in the uh, meeting. And then uh, if, if everything, everyone's fine, he can uh, upload the model uh, and again, go through the process of clash detection. Now, uh, so, so uh, the reason I went through this is uh, because uh, model coordination uh, sits in, on the principles of uh, centralized coordination. And uh, in uh, model coordination, uh, in the mo model coordination module in ACC, uh, it's, it's done in four parts. Uh, so what we do is uh, we, we start, uh, the first pa part is called visualize, second is manage, resolve and then report uh, in the first part uh, visualize you simply upload the models to docs and uh, docs is the common data environment over here where if all the teams upload the model then uh, or what you do is you start creating uh, federated views you filter out the data that you need uh, for crash detection and once you've set it up all uh, all this then you move on to the next phase uh, where you can uh, where you have uh, something called as a clash matrix, uh, where you can uh, prioritize and uh, look at clashes. Either you want to solve it or you want to uh, reduce the noise. Uh, we will get into the details of all of this, uh, but just, just to talk about the workflow. Uh, next, uh, after this, what you will do is you will move on to the resolve phase, where you can uh, start resolving the issues uh, in your design tool to uh, tools like Revit. Uh, take it to the coordination meeting, and again, if, if it's all okay, you close the issue and publish new version of the model. And finally, in the report phase, you create uh, the clash detection report. So, so once you've set up everything in Visualize, you go through this process of manage, resolve, and report again and again until you've resolved all the clashes uh, in, in, in the model. Right, uh, so we will begin with uh, the, how, how clash detection is uh, done in ACC. Uh, uh, but before before you start uh, start with that, what you need to do is we need to set up uh, 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 clash detection and uh, <clears throat> or uh, we, we need to set up uh, model coordination. And uh, in order to do that, uh, we need to set up something called as a, a coordination space. So what is a coordination space uh, coordination space is a space where basically all uh, all the teams uh, or or uh, it's it's a space where which has all the models that you want to review for coordination and uh, clash detection and uh, in construction cloud it's as simple as selecting a folder in docs over here as you see over here, uh, um, uh, in order to create a coordination space, I'll just select a folder in Docs and all the models that have been uploaded in the folder and its subfolder will be used for clash detection. Um, so 
firstly, we have to set up a coordination space. So, and in order to set up a coordination space, we go to the model coordination module over here, uh, under settings, uh, click on create, and then you'll get this uh, window that pops up on the right, uh, name, name the coordination space and select the folder. So that is uh, um, the process of uh, setting up a coordination space. Uh, after, after uh, so in, in terms of coordination spaces, uh, you can create uh, two kinds of coordination space. And one of them is called a shared, uh, a shared or a formal coordination space. And the other is a private coordination space. Uh, so th this is an important concept uh, uh, to understand. Um, and so what is a private coordination space? Uh, a private coordination space is a space that belongs to a particular team. Uh, and so let's have a look at this uh, structure team over here. Uh, and uh, so uh, the structure team is current, uh, currently might be sa uh, saves the Revit models over here in, in Revit and uh, and all the model mod models that they have consumed from the other teams that will be saved over here in the consumed folder. If you have if you have a bit of knowledge about design collaboration, you will know that uh, when uh, when a team, uh, let's say the structure team, um, when the architecture team shares a model uh, with with uh, with everyone, uh, it will appear in the timeline, and the structure team can then consume uh, consume or save a copy of that model. And when the structure team consumes or save uh, or saves that model, that is saved under in this consumed folder. So now, if we were to look at this uh, structure. Uh, the the folders and the structure team it has its model over here and all the models that it has saved or consumed from the architecture and the MEP team will be saved here. So so the structure team can then start the class detection process uh, for all these uh, all 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 the files in these in this folder. Similarly, uh, if uh, the other team like architecture or MEP, if they wanted to set up their own uh, private uh, Coordinate, uh, coordination space, then they would do that in, in their folders. So that is, uh, that is uh, what uh, private coordination, uh, what private coordination spaces are. And uh, again, going back to a bit of uh, design collaboration, when uh, every, uh, uh, when each team uh, shares a file uh, for uh, collaboration, it's going to be saved under uh, the shared folder that we see over here. So when architecture team shares a model, that will be saved over here in architecture uh, structure over here. And this is a shared folder, which is accessible to everyone. Uh, uh, that's that's why you have, it, it's called a shared team space. So over here, uh, maybe the BIM coordinator uh, can then uh, look at all the clashes uh, uh, between the models that are shared by the team. And this is uh, where the formal coordination or the formal class detection happens. Uh, depending on your project and situation, you can either uh, you choose to create uh, a private or a formal coordination space. The other thing is um, uh, you can also create uh, coordination spaces from uh, the design collaboration module. And if you do that, you go to settings and under settings, uh, under the coordination, under coordination, you can set up the coordination spaces over here. All right, let's dive into the workflow now. So the first part is uh, visualize. So now that we have set up uh, the models, uh, uh, set up model coordination, let's begin with the workflow. And in visualize, the first part as it shows over here, we need to upload models to docs. Uh, so prior to uploading the model, uh, what I have done over here is uh, created uh, views or set up set of views in Revit. Um, so these are the views when I publish will uh, that will be seen in uh, model coordination or uh, these are the views that will be used for class detection. So over here, what I've done is I have created two views. I had created one for uh, level one, 
so you, this is just a cropped view where you just see uh, the building uh, for level one uh, and the other is uh, the entire building. Uh, so, and while I was saving this view for level one, what I've done is I've tried to make the data as clean as possible. So what I've done is I've, I've switched off the furniture because uh, I, I, won't, I wouldn't require that for clash, sorry, clash detection. So I've just tried to filter uh, all the data that I can uh, prior to publishing. So now that I have published the model uh, views, what will happen is, uh, I know I'm in the models tab over here and under, um, under that, I'll see the same views over here. No, so, what, so you publish the views and th th these are the views that will be visible here. So similarly, what the, uh, similarly, the other teams like structure and MEP can do the same. They can uh, publish, uh, create, the same views uh, and publish it. And you'll have all the uh, views from all the uh, team for crash detection. Uh, the next step is to create uh, federated uh, model views. And uh, again, we will we'll be in, uh, get still in a mod the model tool in uh, model coordination. Uh, so in, to create federated uh, model, model views, it's, it's very simple. All you need to do is uh, sit, click uh, click on the views that you want to uh, use. In this case, I've chosen uh, the level one for MEP structure and uh, uh, architecture. And once I click on uh, open view, uh, I'll get a 3D view. Uh, I'll open the models in the 3D viewer. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, yeah, with, with uh, all the models combined. And over there, what I can do is uh, I can uh, save the model, uh, save the views. So what I did is I saved the view for uh, MEP and versus architecture, architecture structure. So depend. So similarly, you can start saving uh, the views uh, that you want. And while 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 you open the uh, models in the viewer, you also get different filters. Uh, where you can start uh, filtering the data. Uh, so this is the uh, this is what I was talking about over here. Uh, in, in in this is what it is in the workflow filter data. Uh, so we will use these filters uh, to maybe uh, further cut down um, uh, some of the information that we don't want for class detection. So you you get the options of choosing uh, families, disciplines, uh, categories. You can also create your own filters. And with that, we will summarize, uh, we will we'll, uh, conclude the visualize uh, phase in class detection. Next, we move on to the manage uh, phase. So uh, in manage, uh, uh, the first thing that we want to do is uh, prioritize. So and in order, uh, so in order to do that, what we'll do is we'll click on the clashes uh, tool over here. And as we click on the clashes tool, uh, you'll see a grid on screen over here. And this is called a clash grid. And uh, so what uh, what uh, this comprises of is, uh, <clears throat> so you see on the left are all the views uh, that we had published, uh, all the teams had published. So the first, these are uh, the architects. Uh, these are published by the architect, MEP, and structure. So the same views are in the y-axis as well. And uh, what, what, what you do see is, uh, um, and, and these are the cells. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll zoom into it. And uh, these cells over here represent uh, uh, the clash groups between the model. So let's take the example of this cell. Uh, so it shows that there are 76 clashes between the MEP model and uh, the structure model. And once you click on the the cell or the group, you'll you'll see the clashes uh, between the uh, two models. So as you click on the cell, uh, you'll open uh, both the models in the viewer, and then you'll see a list of all the clashes in 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 the model. And uh, um, 
so now 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 uh, we've uh, had a look at the uh, um, in terms, in terms of the way, uh, workflow, now we have uh, looked at uh, the clash grid uh, and we've prioritized uh, the models that we want to view for clash detection. Uh, uh, we can either, uh, we get a choice of either uh, creating an issue or reducing noise. So what, what do I mean by reducing noise? Okay, let's take this example over here. Uh, so while I, uh, while I was viewing the clashes for this particular model, uh, I came across this issue where uh, this clash where uh, uh, the clash detection tool uh, showed that there was a clash between the wall and the switch panel uh, over here. Uh, so, like from from our understanding, this is how it's intended to be, right? Uh, yeah, this is a valid penetration, and you don't want to uh, uh, you you simply want to ignore the clash and move move on to the important ones. So, in if if when you come across such situations. Well, what you can do is uh, you cl click on the clash, click on not an issue, and as you click on not an issue, you will get a, a tab that opens up on the right, and that over there you can classify this clash as a valid penetration, uh, and it will disappear from these uh, clashes over here. So and so that is uh, what I mean by uh, reducing noise. Next part of the workflow is to create a, uh, an assign issue. Um, so again, uh, while uh, while you're reviewing, if you come across clashes that uh, need attention from the team, then uh, what you can do is uh, click on create an issue, and what that will have uh, and what will happen next is you'll be asked to place the push pin, and you can place the push pin uh, where the clash is. Uh, and when you place a clash, uh, there'll be a uh, issues panel that opens up on the right, and you will be asked to fill all the details about the issue. Uh, so in our case, we, we, we uh, in this example, this was an issue uh, on level one between a wall and a pipe. Uh, so just uh, it it'll have all that detail. Uh, uh, and it'll also have a picture of uh, or the snapshot of of the clash, and. Um, so yeah, you, you need to start uh, adding all the information in this. And the most important uh, information that you need to add is uh, uh, the assignee. Uh, when, um, so in, in this case, we want the MEP uh, team to have a look at this issue. So we'll assign it to them. And once you assign uh, the issue, uh, what will happen is the MEP team will get an email uh, and they'll be asked to look into this issue and uh, resolve it. So in, in this manner, what we start doing is uh, uh, like the entire team, uh, the engineering, uh, the, the designers, uh, the manage, project manager, contractor, subcontractor, even the owner, we can all start uh, looking at the, the, these issues and start solving them uh, together. Moving on uh, to the next part that is uh, resolve. Um, so once once we have uh, all the issues, uh, once someone's created an issue, uh, you want you want to begin uh, with the process of resolving it. Um, so in order to resolve uh, for the first, um, what you need to do is you need to go to the model uh, issues tool over here, and this issues tool is uh, basically uh, will 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 display a log of all the issues that are assigned uh, that are. Uh, that are currently going on in the project. And uh, what you can do is uh, you can start uh, filtering this. Um, uh, if some of them are assigned to you, you filter it by that. And or if you want to look at the more critical ones, you prioritize that by uh, looking at the due date. Uh, yeah. So what you can do is let's, we'll, we'll take the example of this clash. I can uh, click on that, open it. Uh, and in order to resolve it, uh, I can go to Revit and solve it. Uh, now, uh, as we move on to Revit, uh, like the, the um, there's an this is an interesting uh, tool uh, uh, that we have. It's an add-in uh, called Issues Add-in, and once you have uh, installed that 
add in in Revit. It, it's a free added. Um, uh, you can go to the Autodesk uh, desktop uh, app and uh, install it. Once you've installed it, what is going to happen is that all the issues that we previously saw in this uh, log uh, over here, just, they will they will appear here. So this panel is basically the panel that we saw uh, in the web portal. Uh, so some you you maybe uh, you don't need to uh, at times uh, go to the web portal and look at uh, try and search for the issues that you're assigned. You can simply while while you're working in Revit, you can uh, look at these uh, this issue panel over here and start uh, looking at the issues uh, or the clash issues that are assigned to you. Uh, so in, in terms of resolving, you can uh, we'll click on uh, click on the push pin and uh, it'll give you the details of uh, the issue. And then, then you make the design changes in Revit. And once you've made the design changes, uh, you can uh, you can update update the status of that issue. Uh, so you can either uh, change it to pending or in review. And once you update the status, uh, what will happen is uh, the person uh, who's created the issue or the people who have been copied or are the watchers uh, in, in this issue, they'll get an email notification uh, that uh, uh, something has been updated in the issue and that they can have a, uh, go and have a look at it. Uh, another tool uh, that we have is uh, in... in, in um, model coordination is uh, meetings. Uh, so this is an interesting tool. Uh, what this tool lets you do is, uh, it lets you create meetings uh, with uh, all the people that are involved in the uh, uh, in the coordination process. And uh, in, in, you can set up this meeting in uh, construction cloud. Uh, you can add uh, themed or Zoom meeting links uh, and, and start adding uh, uh, details about uh, the meeting. Uh, the unique thing about uh, the tool, uh, the meetings tool over here is that it lets you uh, uh, attach references. Uh, to in this example, uh, this was a coordination meeting, uh, which was discussing where we were discussing issues MEP about the MEP clashes. And uh, while uh, one of the topics was uh, the clash between the wall versus pipe. So well, what I did, uh, what we did was attached uh, the uh, issue as a reference over here. Uh, what that does is, uh, what well, is that every time, uh, let's say the issue was uh, updated, uh, you you would uh, you would get an update, or you are able to track track that issue. Uh, so yeah, with with the uh, with with meetings, uh, you can. Uh, Keep a track of uh, all these issues, uh, and it's all located in one central space. So, uh, so now we are here in the final step. Uh, what? Uh, so we can go back to the issues log where you have. Uh, uh, if 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 you uh, if you've discussed the changes in the coordination meeting, you're happy. Uh, with uh, the solutions provided, you can uh, simply go to the issues log over here and uh, update the status of the issue to cl uh, to close. And it'll, it'll uh, move to the closed tab uh, in in uh, in the issue in the issues tool. And the final uh, step would be to create uh, reports. Uh, so in, in terms of creating uh, clash detection reports or clash issues report, uh, what you can do is uh, uh, you can go to the uh, model uh, reports tool in model coordination and uh, um, you can you can click on uh, create report. Uh, as, as you hit uh, click create report, you'll get, uh, you'll, you'll be asked to choose a template and there are three types of templates that you can choose. Uh, either uh, an issue detail report, issue summary report, or uh, issue status summary, or a summary report. So you select the template, and then uh, you can start filtering uh, the information that you want to see in the report. Uh, so all all these are parameters or fields that we see in the issue. 
when we create. Uh, so you can, you can simply uh, uh, choose the information that you wish to uh, see in the report. Uh, in, in this case, I wanted to see the, the uh, uh, clash issues for the last uh, seven days. So I've selected that and the other fields that I needed to see in the report. And one, after I'm happy with uh, the information, I can uh, click on uh, run report and a report will be generated for me. And this is an example of what the report looks like. Uh, it'll, it'll have all the details of the issues uh, and a snapshot of uh, the clash clashes. But uh, in terms of creating uh, reports, uh, uh, there are two ways you can create a report. Uh, the first one is an on-demand report, which we just saw, where you uh, select a template and then uh, run a report. The other thing is, uh, the other thing is you can, uh, the other type is uh, where you can schedule reports. So in this, uh, what you have to do is you have to save a template first. Uh, so in the template, you can save uh, uh, all the settings or, or uh, all the uh, settings as to what you want to see in the report. And once you've done that, uh, you can you click you can click on the schedule uh, button to schedule the report at a particular time. So let's say if you're going for uh, if you have a coordination meeting every uh, Friday, so just prior to that, you can uh, schedule a report and yeah, and every uh, prior to that, it'll, it'll, uh, or a report will be generated uh, with, with the latest uh, clash issues. So now, uh, just just to summarize uh, uh, the the, the uh, coordination uh, workflow, uh, model coordination workflow, so we begin with the visualize phase where we simply filter, uh, create views and filter the data that we want to see for clash detection. In manage, uh, we, we prioritize uh, 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 and start creating issues for, uh, issues for the clashes. And in resolve, uh, we, we start uh, resolving those clashes in the design tools. Uh, uh, and finally, we, we create a report, uh, clash reports. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, once you set it up, you go through this process of manage, resolve, report again and again until there are zero clashes uh, between the models. Uh, just to add uh, something to it, there is another interesting tool uh, in uh, model uh, in ACC that's called Insight. Uh, so, uh, and uh, what Insight does is it lets you create your own dashboard. Uh, so you can uh, pick the uh, you can pick from the existing cards that are available, or you can choose uh, tools like Power BI to create your own dashboard to uh, so to see the information that uh, you want want to see. So now in this uh, dashboard, I just picked up some uh, cards uh, that were already available, and some of them were were, uh, were quite handy. Uh, like this one was uh, talking about the coordination uh, issue status. So I, I I can know which which one are the open and close. And then I can also have a quick overview of all the issues that are assigned to the companies. Uh, again, another this one talks about the active versus the closed uh, issues. So this is this is a, a quick way, uh, a quick way, a quick way to look at uh, to have an overview of uh, of your project. Uh, finally, just want to summarize the session and talk about uh, the key takeaways. I think the biggest takeaway that I really uh, would like you guys to take is uh, to think beyond the clash report. Uh, so like right, uh, uh, what happens uh, usually is uh, in, in the industry is everybody uh, is so focused on uh, the uh, creating the clash, uh, clash detection reports. Uh, that that we tend to forget about the actual coordination uh, problem in hand. So and then as we look at the entire uh, picture, we we realize that uh, clash detection, uh, clash clash reports are part are part of it. But uh, we 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 can we need to see how we can streamline the entire uh, process. Uh, the other thing uh, uh, I can I would like to talk is about uh, manage and prioritize when you're going to start. Uh, uh, I, um, bringing uh, models in the common data environment 
what is important is to make sure uh, that they're clean. Uh, uh, you can use the model browser here. Uh, so why we need to do this is uh, the, uh, the cleaner the information is for clash detection, uh, the easier it's going to be for the BIM coordinator or the person who's, uh, who's looking at the clashes uh, because he does, doesn't, he then doesn't need to spend time to clear, uh, uh, clean out uh, the information or uh, reduce the noise, as I, as I mentioned earlier. Um, then, yeah, use the Revit issues add. It's, it's going to save a lot of time. And, uh, yeah, also uh, automate the report. Finally, uh, some of the best practices in model coordination. Uh, Avoid uh, duplicate models or duplicate geometry. Again, this uh, reiterates the fact uh, the uh, the thing I mentioned earlier about having uh, models uh, that are clean. Uh, it's again, it, it's just going to simplify things uh, in in the process. And uh, yeah, avoid large and uh, complex models. Uh, so, for example, as as I showed, uh, just publish the views that you want to use for coordination. Uh, like I've, I've also seen companies, what they what they do is uh, they uh, uh, they um, they create a view and they simply uh, publish the categories that they want to use for coordination. That let's say uh, they they uh, publish ceilings, uh, and the MEP team will uh, pu uh, uh, publish on their side uh, the the information on their side. So that that part of uh, uh, the clash detection process is is so, uh, so much simplified and uh, streamlined. So yeah, you you uh, so you can follow that as well, and then uh, use uh, all 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 the models that are set up in uh, Revit. It should use uh, the chair coordinate system, so as to avoid any misalignments of the models. And finally, to talk about the limitations. Uh, so uh, in 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 terms of uh, coordination spaces, uh, you can create. Uh, maximum of 20 coordination spaces uh yeah that's but which i think is sufficient uh because mostly as, as you saw in this example uh you will then just end up creating uh, one as a shared space and the others uh the others would be uh the private coordination space will, will depend on uh, on the number of uh, designers and uh who you have design teams that you have uh so yes that with that, I would like to conclude uh, uh, this presentation and uh, uh, okay. before I move into this, if, if you have any questions, uh, please uh, drop them in the chat. Uh, we, we will try to all, uh, address all of them. I'll just give you guys a minute uh, to leave them in the chat. So I have a question from uh, Jasper, and she's asking: In Navisworks, usually we combine uh, the models and then run the clash uh, test. Can we run a clash test uh, anytime? Similarly, in model coordination, uh, okay. To answer, uh, so so uh, to answer uh, the 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 answer to that is uh, no, no. Uh, so. In order to uh, create a clash report, uh, the way it works is every time you publish a model from Revit to Construction Cloud, that is when uh, uh, you you'll get the clash clash detective uh, detection tool in ACC will be uh, updated. Uh, so you run. So if 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 you want to uh, run a clash test, uh, what you do is simply upload the model or, or publish the model to ACC. And the clash detection tool will automatically uh, detect those clashes for you. I hope that helps. Alrighty. Uh, while uh, while we're waiting for questions, uh, one um, if if you're further interested in uh, learning more about. Uh, BIM Collaborate or any of the other tools, uh, we have a course on our website uh, and uh, we, we, we go through all the modules uh, in uh, where we teach all the modules in uh, BIM Collaborate, starting from setting it up with, with the admin tool. Uh, then we uh, talk about uh, docs and how to use docs and the different tools in that. 
uh, so for this, what we do is we take a, a live example and we'll, we'll, we'll set it up for you. Uh, the, the, the third module is uh, design collaboration and uh, finally uh, model coordination. So if, if you guys are interested, do check our website. I'll, I'll post a link later. Uh, it's a one day course. Uh, All right, I think um, that concludes the session. Uh, thank you for joining uh, today and have a good day ahead.